Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, a place of change. Dr. Eric Thomas, hallelujah. We're here on this Sabbath day. God has watched over us all week, and we are excited to give God praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God, we came to bless your name. We came to give you honor. We came to give you glory. Hallelujah. Bless the name of the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Jesus. How I love you. Now I lift up my voice with your praise. Forever in worship because, God, you have been so good. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Precious Jesus. is in this 
Hallelujah. God is truly worthy of the praise. Hallelujah. Give God some praise. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And I was just thinking as they were uh, singing, you know, the enemy is, uh, the, the Bible says that the enemy seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. Amen. Anybody ever heard that before? Is that a new, is that a new text? The Bible says the enemy seeks to kill, steal, and destroy. And so there's a, church, there's a term that I hear a lot, and um, I just want us to be careful. I, I hear the term church hurt a lot. Amen. And, and, I, and I don't care how bad, you know, people feel that the church hurt them. But that has nothing to do with God. And God hasn't hurt us. Amen. And, and, and I say that because, of course, we know that today may not be the day that Jesus was crucified. But today is the day that we reflect, you know, on uh, that particular situation in the life of Christ. And, and the, the, the scripture that I love, when I was, you know, growing up, most of you know, I, I didn't grow up going to church. Uh, but when I was younger, there was, there was a lot more evangelizing than there are today, right? And I don't know if y'all remember this, but when I was younger, uh, even if you didn't go to church, they would pass out these little tracks, and they were cartoon tracks, right? They weren't long, but they were like these cartoon tracks, you know, and all of the cartoon tracks at some point in them talked about, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. Before I get into the word, I really, I want, I, I want to say this, and I'm hoping that it'll shift something in you. As I got older and I started going to church, and I started studying the Bible, right? So first, you know, um, my first, like, real stu studying the Word and going to church was uh, with Jehovah Witness. So I would go to the Kingdom Hall. And, like, my guy that studied with me, like, we got in the Word, we got in the Word, right? And then after that, you know, I went to Oakwood. We got in the Word, we got in the Word. And I, and I started to hear that God could have sent, like, created or sent another sacrifice, praise God. But for whatever reason, he sent his only begotten son. Praise God. I hope this registers with somebody. I want to say it one more time. He could have created a sacrifice specifically to pay the price for our debt. Anything. Could have sent an angel. But for whatever reason, he decided to send his only begotten son. Praise God. And so today, as I was getting prepared, I said to myself, wow, 
God sent his best. So why is it that we don't give God our best? And for real, I don't care if you ever come back to church again, like you don't got to go to church to go to heaven. But some kind of way church hurt or the way people think about church makes them treat God a certain way. And I don't understand the connection between the two. Because long before I came to church or started going to church, I knew it was God that found me where I was and did what. So even when I had my little situation with Bethel, like I would never not do God's will because of some people. That had nothing to do with like when I was homeless, people didn't come to get me from that situation. Like it wasn't people that helped me to get to Oakwood. It wasn't people who when I have money to go to Oakwood that showed mercy and grace. Like it wasn't people. God may have used some people, but it was God that did it. And so I just, I want to, I, I want to make sure that we understand on this day what God went through by sending his son and then what his son went through. So he literally sent the very best of what he has. And we got to get to a point in our lives, no matter what hurt you going through, no matter how you feel about life, that has nothing to do with God. If God sent his best, we got to stop giving God leftovers and start giving God our best. Period. You know, and it just seems like when I think about spiritual things, it's like we got all week to do everything else. But then when it comes to God, and I'm, look, I'm not talking about coming to church. I promise y'all, we're grateful for the support that we get. But Dee Dee, just the way she was born and raised, she's just going to put the whole thing on her back. I'm not talking about coming to church and paying your tithe or helping with the church. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the time you spend with God, the way you use your gifts and your time. Like, we got certain gifts, y'all. They, we, they, it been on ice forever. Or when we do give God our gift, we, we like barely give God energy. And it's like, yo, we got to get active, y'all. And any way we can repay God, we got to figure out how to do that. Amen. Is that, am I making sense? I just want to make sure I'm making sense. Am I making sense? Praise God. And so I just, I just feel like God deserves the best. God's people deserve the best. As I said before, I, I ain't tripping on nobody, but when we went to Disney World, I wanted, I wanted our babies to see the best. I wanted them to get up and get on the monorail and go straight to the park. Amen. Praise God. I, let me tell you something. These kids enjoyed themselves so much, I didn't even know Disney was open at 1 o'clock in the morning. They would get back. My kids came back. I'm like, where y'all at? they like, we at the park. I'm like, it's 1230. Y'all just hanging out? They're like, no, the park's still open. I'm like, praise God. Somebody told me you had to have some kind of virtual pass or something for the nighttime. I said, okay, virtual pass it is. Hey, man, we had so many meals. I couldn't even, like, I found out I had, like, eight snacks. I, ain't, I couldn't even use eight snacks. We had meals. We had, and, and, and I said to somebody, you know, you're doing the most. I was like, that's the problem. When it come to God, we don't do the most. When it come to the world, we always doing the most. We always giving them the best. But when it come to church, we want to just barely be here. Hey man, we come into church and we not involved. It's like, come on, y'all. God deserves our best. So I just want you to make a commitment before we get out of here. I want, to, I want you to make a commitment, whatever that looks like for you. I'm not in your personal business, but if you're giving God 10 minutes a day or you worshiping every other day, like just make up in your mind, like, God, you deserve an hour of my time a day. Not on the phone. You deserve an hour. I need to be in my word. Like, like what, I don't care what it looks like. But make sure that in quarter two, Q2, which starts April 1st, Monday, do, do me a huge favor. May Q2 be better than Q1. May God get more out of you in Q2 than he got out of, may the intensity be different. May you be more active. Just may God, may, may God be excited about Q2 and it's not another quarter where you just have half-heartedly in this relationship or have hardly given your gifts and your talent. Just, get, man, just give God everything you can. Is that all right? I didn't say the church. You, you pausing. I didn't say the church. I said God. Can you give God everything he deserves in Q2? Let me just see your hands or get some energy. Q2, you go. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. All right, let's go, let's go to the word. I'm so excited that Jesus' sacrifice always means we're blessed. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. I'm always, I'm grateful that the closer we get to God, the better our lives are. I'm always grateful that some kind of way, 
when God is doing what he's doing, even though we sinners and we don't have a lot of time for him and most of our money don't go to his causes, I'm just so grateful that whatever he does, he's doing it for us. Amen. Praise God that he's not selfish and self-centered and it's just not about worshiping him or praising him, but you cannot be God-given. The more you do for God, the more he's going to do for you and the more you're going to be able to do for his kingdom. Amen. So we talked about this on last week. I just, you know, 53, I don't remember the age that I realized this, but I remember just stopped wanting my wife to get better or my kids to get better. I stopped, you know, like praying about my money and I just realized that everything gets better when I get better. Amen. Praise God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. We're going to go to resurrection, but I got to start here. I, I realize that nothing gets better when I say what my mama didn't do. <laughs> Amen. Nothing gets better when I say what, what my biological father, like, had he been that. Nothing gets better with me talking about him. Amen. I just realized nothing gets better, but, but every book I read, something happens. Every time I get in the Word, something happens. Every time I pray and ask God to change everything. So I just realized that if I want things to get better, all I have to do is get better. Amen. Anybody have an area in your life that you want to get better? Anybody got an area in your life? you just like, God, I wish it would get better. I promise y'all. I remember going to God about Jada. It's like, God, I'm just not really, like, this ain't what I thought, like, when she was younger. But then when she got to high school, I was just like, God, this don't look like I thought father and daughter would look like. He was like, oh, okay, good. Then what you want to do about it? Because you already told me about it, but what do you want to do about it? Like, how serious are you about the, it getting better? And I was like, Lord, I'm super serious about it. Like, it just don't look the way I think it should look. And, well, how would you want it to look? I was like, this is how I want it to look. He said, okay, good. Then let's go. Let's get better. I was like, oh, okay, what you want me to do? He's like, well, I gave you an assessment. Go study it. Like, she did the assessment. Her numbers are there. Go study her numbers. And so as I started studying my daughter and I started realizing like, oh, okay, I got it. Yep, she can be extroverted, but she's really an introvert who's extroverted. Got it. Makes sense, God. So, so I'm looking for her to have this energy every day. And God is like, no, that's not how she's built. At some point, she does not get charged by being around people. So she can be extroverted, but she don't get charged being around. So the more she's around people, the less charged she is. So, you're, so you see what she is, and you think that's her dominant. That's not. So because she's introverted, when she has to go away to get charged, you taking it personal. Uh, I'm talking to somebody. I, can I teach? Is it okay for me to teach? So God said, if you want something better, you got to get better. You can't just want a better relationship with your daughter without understanding your daughter. See, the, the challenge with your son is it comes natural because y'all both have the same personality. So you don't have to study him because you are him. So you don't, you don't got to figure out what makes him tick. What makes him tick is what make you tick. But your daughter is an introvert who becomes an extrovert. So you're going to have to study that because you're not, a, as a matter of fact, you get charged being around people. She does not. And so I was like, all right, God, got it. And so as I, as I begin to study, man, I'm just so, man, I'm telling you, I'm so excited. We talked about, uh, we're going to talk about this later, but we talked about the trip. You know, uh, Didi was like, okay, we're going to Disney World. You know, Didi a boss. So Didi was like, okay, I need you to do this when you get there. You to get, I said, we just going to have fun. No, we ain't going to have fun. This is what we're going to do. I need your spirits this way. I'm going to need you to do this. I'm going to need you to do that. Right? I'm just being real. And so God was like, as you deal with D Jada, you're going to have to do this and you're going to have to do that. You see Jalen, ah, Jalen, like, what up, what up? We pound and hug, whatever. Jada ain't necessarily like, it's not that she has anything against you, but Jada is more guarded. So Jada ain't the one to be just hugging and kissing and like, that ain't her swag. Right? She's like a mama. It don't mean Didi don't hug, but that's not her, like, natural thing. And so God was like, you got to pay attention to her. When she needs her space, you give her her space. But what you're doing is when, because you want to, you putting that on her when that's not what she wants. And so as I begin to make the adjustment, I'm just telling y'all, we went to Disney World, y'all. I can't tell you the last time with any of them, we've had disagreements or arguments. And God was like, the reason why you had disagreements and arguments with them is because you wanted them to be a certain way when that's not who they are. And you wanted to love them the way you wanted to love them, but not the way they want to be loved. 
So you got to figure out how they're wired, and then you love them the way they're wired, and you ain't going to never have no problem. Y'all not hearing what I'm saying. So all of the stress was coming from me trying to love her in the way I'm wired. And so God said, oh, no, you got, I already gave you the solution when I gave you the assessment. You just don't want to study. You think just because y'all are all in the same house, it just supposed to by osmosis, everything just supposed to happen, and it don't work like that. But if you're willing to put some work in, and I promise y'all, we at Disney, man, we had a great time. Jalen, um, flight end up, you know, everybody know flights, right? So we end up leaving and go, uh, coming back, everybody together in the airport for a few minutes, right? And we were just talking about how much fun we had. It was no whatever. And Jalen and Jalen stayed in the same room and didn't have no problem. I'm like, I had to coach Jalen up like, yo, bruh, I'm trying to tell you, if you keep doing this, this is going to happen. And so God says, everything in your life is going to get better when you get better. Stop praying for stuff to get better and pray for you to get better. I'm just saying, some of y'all, you don't need a better relationship. You just need to stop tripping when you call and they don't answer. And now you in your head about why they didn't answer. And so now you didn't made up a reason why they didn't. And now the devil kill and steal and destroy because you didn't say the reason why they didn't call me back was nobody told you that was why they didn't call you back. My boy just hit me the other day. E, I called you a couple of times. You didn't, I, I didn't know what was going on. I said, ain't nothing was going on. I did 30-day challenge, and I was on the phone for 30 days praying with folks, and I was tired of being on the phone. <laughs> so I cut my phone off. It wasn't nothing personal. And I said, and I knew when I cut it off, some of the people that I wanted to talk to, I, was, they, I wasn't going to be able to talk to them, and they was going to take it personal. And some of the people I didn't want to talk to, I wasn't going to have to worry about talking to them. But I knew it was going to be some casualties. It was going to be some people who I wanted to talk to, but they didn't know that you had to call me a few times to get to me. But people were making up why I didn't call them. I said, bro, that ain't had nothing to do with nothing. I was tired of being on the phone. I needed a break. It had nothing to do with you personally. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I just want to make sure you hear what I'm saying. So, so what God is saying is that everything around us will get better. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. It's a formula. When you get better, Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. I understood as a child. I behaved as a child. But when I became, Paul is telling you, I got better. We're not just talking about God and Christ. And we're not talking about, just, you know, uh, uh, when he coming back and Pharisees said, no, Paul said, listen, you got to understand, there was a time in my life before Christ, I was in the church. I was reading the Bible. I was killing people. I was murdering uh, uh, men. I was murdering women. I was murdering children when I was a child. But when I became, everything gets better when you get better. You cannot expect God to do anything different in your life if you're the same version that you were five, ten years ago. You can't ask that your marriage be better if you're not a better husband. You can't ask your marriage to get better if you're not a better wife. You can't ask that your relationship with your children get better if you're not a better parent. If you're the same version but you're going harder, nothing's going to change. God was like, your daughter ain't got nothing against you. You just, I called Jay like, Jaylen, I'm going out of town tomorrow, bro. You good? Jay like, I'm good. Jalen is good. He like bump class. He in college. He don't care. Dad, where you going? Oh, I'm there. Bro, you packed that quick? I've been packed. I, I, I was ready to take a trip. I've been packed. Let's go. I called Jada. Jada, can you go with me? She's like, nope, I can't go. And I'm going, she don't want to go with me. God said, yeah, she don't want to go with you. She really takes school serious. So she's not interested in missing class. Had you told her 30 days in advance, she would have said, yes, you can't ask her 24 hours before. You can't ask her 48 hours before. So you're thinking she don't want to go. She does want to go. She just needs to get prepared. Just because you don't need to get, oh, I'm not talking to anybody. We're going to go to the next slide. I just want you to stop praying and get better. Because there are some things you're praying about that you don't need to be praying about. You just need to get better. You still God, can you help? He said, stop praying, get better. <laughs> get better. You, I already gave you money, you don't need no more. You're not doing right with what I gave you, get better. Go take some classes on finances. Go take some tax classes, get better. You don't have to give the IRS all your money. You can open up a foundation and you can use your money to help the community get better, but you can't get <laughs> You can't get better, son, if you don't 
Son, you need an accountant and a CPA. You need a bookkeeper. Son, you need to study. You don't know where your money, you, can, you don't need more money. Stop praying for it. You need to get more information about money so you can, get, you can do more with what I already gave you. I already gave you enough money, son, to have as much as you want, but you can't get no more because you're not doing right by it. Praise God. Am I talking to anybody? Just want to go back and we're going to go forward. The Macintosh Portable 1989 laptop. Boy, that's what you had to carry around right there. Amen. That was it right there. You had to carry that around. That was a laptop right there. Yeah. Imagine you taking that on the plane. You probably wouldn't get through TSA. Amen. Let's go to the next one. We're about to get into the message. Yeah. MacBook Pro. Yeah. Yeah. Can somebody get Carl the mic? Can somebody get Carl the mic? I'm about to ask us a computer question. I don't want to mess it up too bad. Somebody get Carl the mic for me, please. Uh, the Mac Pro, you can take this on the plane with you. This is lightweight. It's a 2024 laptop, 128 gigabytes of RAM, 128,000 times the 1989 version. Hmm. Hey, man, this is a special day. This is a special time, right? This is a special day. This is a special time. This is, this is, this is the time Amen. This is the time where we not only recognize the life, the sacrifice, and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, this is the weekend we understand like, oh, okay, we got to pause and we got to get everything we can possibly get out of this moment. There was a reason why Jesus did it. The reason why he did it was that there was, that you, it was impossible for your circumstance to change. There was no, you couldn't do anything to change your circumstance. There was no, there was no way out of what you were in. Hey Amen. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You've been there before where you felt like your, your circumstances weren't going. I remember being homeless and like, man, God, this is my second winter homeless. Like, this ain't about to never end. You know what I'm talking about when you get that feeling of, shoot, this ain't, I don't know how I got myself in this. I don't know how I'm going to get myself out. Like, I might be doomed for this lifestyle forever. Somebody know what I'm talking about. Come on, somebody know it. Somebody in the room know what I'm talking about. You've been in a situation that you knew physically you couldn't get yourself out of. Hallelujah. Praise God. And I remember hope. I don't know if anybody else needed it. Amen. But today is about hope. Amen. I needed some hope. I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The first year homeless, like, that was an accident. Now we the second one. I'm like, yeah, this is about to become a habit. Like, ain't, my circumstance ain't changed. Like, this is it. And I remember a revival. And when Pastor Willis did that revival, and he talked about Jesus Christ, and I didn't go up front because of no Jesus Christ. I went up front because I needed my circumstances to be changed. Hey man, I'm just being honest. Some of y'all might be holier than thou. I wasn't going up just to give my life to Christ. I was like, oh, he could do what? <laughs> he could change my circumstance. Like, I don't got to be homeless no more. I'm like, let's go. And I'm telling y'all, months after going to church, getting baptized and giving my life to Christ, I got my GED out of nowhere and I was headed to Huntsville, Alabama. I'm telling you, for me, when you talk Jesus Christ, you talk hope. When you talk Jesus Christ, you talk about things can be changed. When you talk about Jesus Christ, you talk about a reset. <laughs> I'm talking to somebody, amen, amen. I'm so gr glad that the 1986 version and the 2024 version of Eric Thomas ain't the same in no category. I ain't talking about in two of them. I'm talking about in no category. Me and Didi get up in the morning and have worship, and we both go like, yo, how are we still together? I'm just being real. Like, we, we, this would be 34 years of marriage, not together. And we still get up and go like, yo, this can't be nothing but God. Like, it ain't, it's not even possible. Like, we don't even like, we ain't, we ain't even built like that. We don't even come from that. Like, we're not waking up in the morning on something like, oh, we just got it going on. We just communicate effectively. <laughs> like, we were just made for each other. We getting up looking at each other like, yo, you definitely ain't me, and I'm definitely not you. Like, we got two total different personalities. We got two different worldviews. Like, yo, we ain't, we ain't, we might be both from Detroit, but we ain't, we ain't nothing alike. How in the world did you? We ain't the Huxtables, y'all. We not the cleavers, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, this ain't leave it to beaver. Every day I get up, like, thank you, Jesus. It was because of your life, your death, and your resurrection that I have hope to do something that on my own I couldn't pull off. I couldn't pull this off on my own. 
And you thinking the longer we together and the more money we have and the more success we get, no, that's what makes it worse. Every time I grow and every time she grow, we could be going in different directions. It's nothing but the glue of God that keeps us together. I don't know who I'm talking to today, but I'm trying to tell you, today is about hope. Today is about a reset. Now, I wanted Carl to get on the mic. Let's go to the next one. I want to show y'all something. Uh, if you've ever, you know, used a computer before, a computer is not perfect. There's errors. And so when you have these glitches, there are two things you have to do. You, you either have to do a restart, which is simple. You just push the button and restart, and maybe that will fix it. Somebody know what I'm talking about. You, your, your screen was frozen, something happened, and you restarted it. Sometimes the glitch is so bad, the errors are so bad, you got to do a full reset. Yeah. Praise God, I'm talking to somebody today. Yeah. Amen, amen. I don't know if you caught it, amen. But Jesus' life, his death, and his resurrection puts us in a situation that at any given time, we have the ability to reset. Now, some of y'all just need a restart, but when you come from where I come from, you sometimes, you just, throughout the year, you need a reset. <laughs> Hallelujah, praise God. You just need a whole reset. Amen. I'm going to read it to you. Just as we reset our computers to correct errors and glitches, do me a favor. Stop seeing glitches in your life and errors in your life and stop acting like you don't see them. That's the hope in Christ. When you was in the world, you got to fake the funk, for real. When you in the world, you can't always be transparent because it could be to your demise. But when you're in Christ, you don't have to act like you didn't do what you did and you're not who you are. Wow. Mm. Praise God. I'm I don't know who I'm talking to on that one. I don't know who need to hear that one. Listen to me very closely. When I was younger, I'd be like, I ain't like my daddy. I ain't like my sons. I ain't like my, I'm just like them. I, I'll go to God and say, God, I'm just like, all, I'm them. I'm not better than. We are the same. We come from the same on my mama's side, on my daddy's side. I got the same stuff they got. I'm just asking God in some of the ways that some of the stuff they got, they use properly. Some of the stuff they got, they didn't use properly. I'm asking the stuff that we didn't use properly for generation after generation, help me to use it properly. But I'm not playing no more, acting like I'm not them. I, I need a reset because some of the stuff I was taught, some of the stuff I was trained on, some of the stuff in my DNA, it is an error, it is an, a glitch, it's a glitch, fix it. Yes, sir. So I don't make excuses for why it took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. I know exactly why it took me so long. I know exactly why it took me so long. I, I, I have no excuses for why I used to be arguing with my wife. There's no excuse that, well, where I come from, we, no excuses. You know exactly why you did it, you need to stop doing it. Look, you cannot fix something that you don't think is broke. And it does not benefit you to lie to yourself about your errors and your glitches. You were born in sin and shaped in iniquity. You ain't got to feel bad about it. You were born in sin and shaped. But Jesus came so that we don't have to keep talking about the 1989 version and we can become through his life, through his death, through his sacrifice, through his resurrection, we can become the best version or the best model we can possibly be at this particular time in our lives. I want you to ask yourself that question. Are you the best version that you could possibly be? And if not, why not? I get so tired as a pastor when I hear people talk. It's, she ain't doing this and he ain't doing that. What are you doing to, to grow? What are you doing to get better? You're not going to be judged with them. You're not going to be standing next to them. What are you doing to get you better? What are you doing to be a better version of you? The better version is out. Hey Amen. I got embarrassed again yesterday. We call our AT&T rep, our iPhone dude. It's my guy. My wife said, look, we got some challenges. I can't text. I can't get videos. I can't get nothing. I said, bro, let me holler at her, fix it for her. He said, uh, well, she said, Eric phone don't never do that. My man was like, oh, he got the terabyte. And I was like, oh, Lord. I, I ain't even know. <laughs> he was like, he ain't gonna never have no problem. Every time he get a phone, he get the terabyte. But you got the. <laughs> and I was like, oh no, bro. I thought we got the same phone. He said, yeah, she got the 13. When well, you got the 13, but 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 you got the. She got the. He said, what I can do is I can send you the. I can send you the 15 now with the terabyte, and you ain't gonna never have that problem again. I can upgrade you. 
We have a different version out right now, and you could get more space. Am I talking to anybody? You keep praying for stuff. All you need to do is be the better version of you, the latest version of you, and you got the capacity to do all the stuff you try to do. You just can't do it with the, with the model you have. Yeah. Hey, E, if I could go back. Thank you. Because you kept saying my name and won't let me get in, so I'm just going to interrupt you for yes, 10 seconds you. real quick. Thank you. But that first verse, I want you guys to understand something. That says one megabyte of RAM, and I know a lot of people hear megabyte, gigabyte, terabyte, and you think storage. What he just talked about as a terabyte is storage. The megabyte of RAM is random. I mean, it's, it's the memory for the machine. And what that is, it's the processing. So it's the functionality of the computer to actually open Word, to open your programs. It's how the computer operates. So go to the next one. When you see 128 gigabytes of RAM, do you understand the power? That, like, that's not a small change. Again, this is not a terabyte of storage. Storage is just you can save your files. This is the processing power of the machine. So now I can open Adobe Premiere Pro. I could open, I'm talking about like Pro Tools, I could open Keynote, I could open Word, I could open, and all these programs open and function at the same time. I promise you, you couldn't get one of them programs. You couldn't open Premiere Pro with that first computer. Go back to the first one. Which you, let's, let's you could not open the programs that we use on our phones with now this. on that computer. So I want people to understand, like you just see the numbers, you don't understand that, but that's, I'm talking about like insane improvement. So, so, so many of us are this version trying to open up. You trying to open up stuff in your life that you can't open up because you this version. But I do want to thank my man Toronto, uh, Carl, because he told Didi, Didi, you were actually about to get the upgrade for Mother's Day. <laughs> He said, you just messed it up. He was going to get it to you for Mother's Day. You messed it up. I'm like, thanks, Jerome. Appreciate you, bro. He was like, you're too quick, Didi. If you just would have waited a couple more weeks, you would have got that joke. So, so what am I telling you? I'm telling you that we are asking God for more when we want to stay one gigabyte. We're praying for more, but you one gigabyte. Let's go. Let's go move because I got I to gotta tell the truth and shame the devil. I'm going to read this in again. Just as we reset our computers to correct errors and glitches, we must reset some of our beliefs to align with the truth revealed in Christ. Not just get baptized. Not just know the beliefs. <laughs> but, but, but now we got to start removing some of our beliefs that are not in alignment with God's beliefs. Before encountering Christ, we may have to hmm, learn behaviors and beliefs contrary to his teaching. Like, we got to unlearn some stuff. Let's go to the next one. So, so the beauty is, for God so loved the world, even when we was one uh, 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 megabyte, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son when we were in that state. He didn't wait to give it his son when we got to a better state. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. But let's go to this one. This was important. 1 Corinthians 15, 3 and 4. For what I receive, I passed on to you as of first importance, that Christ died for our sins. Praise God. Praise God. Maybe you ain't catching it. He died, meaning that you don't have to stay one a megabyte. He died for you. You don't have to stay that version of yourself. You don't have to keep saying, this is where I come from. This is the trauma that happened to me. This person did this to me. Christ is saying, you good. I died for that. So I paid the debt for that. So it's covered. So you good. Oh, come on, somebody. Um, uh, come on. So some of y'all didn't get a chance to go to, um, you, didn't, you didn't go to Disney. So I'll never forget there was this ride called the Tron. It was supposed to be the best one. And I was with Rodney and his family, and my family were together. And Jada's a beast on that thing. I don't know how Jada learned how to do it, but Jada was on that thing because I didn't know what to do. And so they was like, well, we ain't got tickets. I was like, yo, cuz come with us. Oh, y'all not, not hearing what I'm saying. <laughs> they was like, we don't got no tickets. I was like, bet, come with us. And we just going to have faith that all of us getting on this ride. They was like, but we ain't got tickets. I was like, don't even worry about no tickets, son. It's somebody that's going to be right. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Some of you get so focused on tickets. I don't have a ticket. You don't really need a ticket. You need the person that's letting people in with the ticket. 
You ain't never got to have a ticket if you got the right person that's standing there. They can let everybody, oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. So I'm telling you, you don't have the ticket to do that. But he died, so you do have a ticket to do that. Yep, I'm like, come on, y'all, let's roll. I get up to my man. My man is cool as all get out. And all of them wasn't like that. He was like, what you got? Jada was like, we got the hope. We got us. <laughs> Jada, like, we got us. I got the one. I'm going to hit this one, and it's for all of us. And I promise you, we, walk, we all went in. It was so crazy. Stacy was kind of standing there kind of like, yo, he put the ticket. He counted three. I was like, Stacy, go. <laughs> Just go. <laughs> she went. My man didn't say nothing. He like, have a good time. He was looking at me like, you want to go? I was like, well, it says something about high blood pressure, and y'all going 65 miles per hour. I'm good on that. I'm just going to stay down here with you. I'm going to stay here with Dee Dee and Lil Man. I'm talking, everybody got on and had a great time. You're not hearing me. You keep going through life saying you don't have a ticket. He died for you. He already paid for it. You can have whatever you like. He already said he died for it. He died, he paid for it. He lived the life that we could not live, the sinless life, and then he came up and was like, I'm good. I'm sitting with the right hand of the Father now. So I'm interceding. So not only did I pay for it, if somebody got the right to say something to you about it, I'm going to speak up on your behalf. Oh, y'all not hearing what I'm saying. Man, I was walking through that joint like we can have whatever we want. I was like, yo, we, we brought 88 people. We didn't spend over 100 grand. <laughs> say something. <laughs> I'm like, say something. <laughs> We just spent a whole bunch of bread. These kids going to have the time of their life. I'm talking about, I was like, I dare you to say something to me. Give me that well done. Scramble those eggs with cheese. <laughs> Hold a toast. You know what I'm saying? Like and I'm just saying, we still going through life with our past. We still going through life where we were born and what our circumstances were and what people told us we could and could not have and what we could and could not do. It don't make sense to be in Christ if you're going to go with the old. He said, I died for your sins, according to the scriptures, I was buried. That he was raised on the third day, according to the scriptures. So he said, I died, I was buried, then I came back. Come on, somebody. You ought to be excited. Let's go to the next one. Amen. Let's go to the next one. So now we need to reset our beliefs. So that's what I want you to do today. Because you have the right to get on whatever ride you want to, now I want you to get off the ride that somebody put you on, and I want you to get on the ride that you really want to be on. I want to help somebody. Bump the relationship that you think you deserve. I want you to write down the relationship you want, and I want you to walk that out. Bump what somebody told you you could do professionally. I want you to write down what you want to do professionally, and I want you to walk that out. I, he died for you. He paid for it. So he didn't have a limit on it. He didn't say there was a limit. He said he died. He was buried. He was raised again. So you can, you, you, you can have whatever life you want. Hallelujah. Praise God. I just told y'all what I wanted. I'm, I ain't on that. I want a phenomenal relationship with my children. Why? Because I didn't have, I didn't, my father wasn't in my life. And me and my mom, because of certain circumstances, our, our blissfulness was disrupted from time to time because I was in my feelings. Come on, I'm not talking to anybody. So I ain't necessarily the dude that wants six cars. And nothing wrong with that if you want. But what I want is a blissful relationship, my wife, my kids. And guess what I got? Exactly what I want. That's what I want. I'm not telling you what to want. I'm just telling you what I want. I want to travel together. That's what I want. I want us all together. I want us all in the world. I wake up every day like, God, I want these babies to love you with all their heart, all their might, all their soul. Give them a, a spouse that's going to love you and that's going to put you first. Like, I don't even care about them. A spouse that loves you, that's going to read the word to the kids, bring the kids to church. This is what I want. And I don't even care what they want. <laughs> Y'all miss what I just said. I don't even care what they want. I'm like, I'm not interested. You're not even, you, go, you can get with somebody that's not God-fearing, and y'all ain't going to be together for long. Why? Because he heard my prayer. <laughs> my prayer going to oh, trump your little crazy prayer. I don't, if you might be looking just at somebody's body, I don't care what you're looking at. I know what I pray, and I'm going to get somebody that loves the Lord and that's going to be bringing my kids to church, whether y'all beefing or not. <laughs> They're going to introduce them to Christ. They're going to be your spouse, going to be praying for my grandbabies. Opening up the word, even when y'all ain't on one accord, them, they going to be keeping God on one accord with them. Oh, you're not hearing what I'm saying. I want somebody that's healthy enough that they ain't got to take care of you because they taking care of themselves. And prayerfully, you're going to take care of yourself and y'all going to be good. Y'all listen to me? 
I'm praying for what I want. You, I'm, not, I'm not living this earth just taking what somebody gave me. I could have done that without Christ. I didn't get Christ to lose. I didn't get Christ to lose. I didn't get Christ to be broke. Somebody gonna tell me, are you to, uh, on that prosperity? I said, you can call, please call me a prosperity preacher. Just don't call me a poverty one. You can call me whatever you want. Just don't call me poverty. Don't call me lack. <laughs> don't lie on me. Yeah, I do want to be prosperous. I do. I want my blood pressure to be 117 over 80. I do want to be prosperous. Yep, I, I want my uh, uh, A1C to be uh, in the 50s, the 40s. Yep, I do want to be prosperous. Yep, I do want to be able to walk at 90 and play with my grandkids at 80. I do want to be prosperous. I don't want to be sick. I don't want to be mentally gone. I don't want to be judging folk. I don't want to be having to talk about people like a dog. I don't want to hate. Call me prosperous. Yeah, I want to be prosperous in every part of my life. Yeah, we just sent the group. I was, uh, I was in uh, 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 Delta Skyline. Uh, the dude was Puerto Rican, so I started doing a little Spanish with him. He said, man, you ever been to Puerto Rico? I said, not only have I been, I just sent a group of students. Matter of fact, I sent one a month ago, and we just sent another group of students from Grand Rapids to Puerto Rico. I'll call me prosperous. I'm sending kids to Dubai. I'm sending kids to Disney. Call me prosperous. But don't call me broke. <laughs> Call me prosperous. Been married 34 years, happily married, blissful. Call me prosperous. Don't call me broke. And I don't want to be with broke people and poverty-minded people. Y'all go ahead and do your own thing. Y'all have your own little community and have a good time. But as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. <laughs> and the last time I checked, he said that I pray that you prosper and be in good health, even as your soul prospers. Or just don't call me poverty. I ain't seen him say that to me in the word. Don't call me lack, because that ain't in the Bible. Don't call me that. <laughs> you go ahead and call, you can say prosperity as much as you want. And I pray for you if you think it's a bad word, shame on you. But nobody says nothing about us being last academically in the black community. Nobody talks about us being last in terms of health. Nobody talks about the fact that we can't have kids at the worst rate. Nobody talks about us dying and going to jail at such an early, we don't mind we don't mind lack. We don't mind poverty. When we start talking about getting on the other side of it, now we got problems. Nobody talk about our babies can't pass tests and they can't get in college. But as soon as we talk about being in good health, <laughs> now you a prosperity. Call me prosperity, but don't call me broke. <laughs> don't call me busted and disgusted. Don't call me evil. Don't call me mean. You're going to see a smile on my face. Hallelujah. I'm talking about, man, you should have been in Disney seeing those kids' faces. I said, if this would, power, if this would prosperity get, give me as much as possible because we're going to keep taking them. I told him, Pastor said, <laughs> Pastor said, I said, where are we going next? Pastor said, Dubai 2026. I said, let, let go. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> we're going where? We're going to Dubai. Let's go. How many are we taking? Whosoever will. Get your stuff together. Let him come. Don't come with that poverty mindset. Because we ain't going to be over there. I'm talking about Jamie. We left. All of us left with all kind of snacks still on our. We, we left with all kind of meals still on our. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Our cup running over. So, 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 so resetting our beliefs. Just give me a couple minutes. This Resurrection Sunday, let us reflect on Sabbath. I apologize. Let us reflect our beliefs and dare to reset those that do not reflect Christ's love, grace, and truth. Let us reset our beliefs about forgiveness, humility, compassion, and love, and embrace the transformative power of Christ's resurrection in our lives. So I want to show y'all something. This is the first. God told me, God told me, I'm going to pull out my paper, and I want y'all to pull out something to write with right now. Grab your phone, because we're going to really do this exercise right now, and then I'm going to let you get out of here. We're going to do the actual exercise. You're not going to hear me preach. We're going to do the actual, the actual exercise. God said we have to reset our beliefs. Today, because of Jesus Christ's sacrifice on the cross, we can reset some of our beliefs right now. I want you to get ready. So here go the first one. I want to show you a meme to show you the first one. Amen. She said Ryan's buffet would still be open if y'all parents hadn't lied about y'all age. <laughs> I'm just, can we just keep it water? Well, we got to change our belief system. I just want to show you. Amen. This is a belief system right here. Ryan's is closed right now because we got a poverty mindset. I'm just being real. We got a poverty mindset. 
You think she playing? She ain't playing. Ryan's is close. Why? Because Christians went in there. Lying about your baby ain't been 10. Your baby ain't been five in five years. They're in there eating for free. You done got three babies in there. All of them above age. In there. But we call ourselves Christians. But we go to restaurants and lie. Why? Because we have a survivor's mindset. We're going in and lying. We're going in the stores lying. We think we got to lie to get God, what God has for us. We think we got to be manipulative to get what God has for us. We don't think we can do it the right way. Praise God. Now, I don't wish nobody demise, but I, I promise you I'm grateful, especially for some of the young men who follow me who always want to do the worldly stuff, and when they see people in the world doing worldly stuff and they see how you can build with one hand and that sucker come crashing down. And sometimes when I do it the Christian way, it seems like it's taking forever. It does take forever when you land bricks. It does take forever when you land a foundation. It does. If you just want to put up a straw, you can put up straw quick. You just want to put up a foundation that ain't strong, you can build that quick. But when them winds come, when the storm comes, and I love it because you know the folks that celebrate with you when you're doing good. As soon as the devil, everybody, don't know, ain't nobody. Yep, this go our problem right here. Ryan Buffet, still be open if we hadn't lied. Hallelujah. I want to keep that one up while I do this one. I just want to, I, I just want to, you know what I'm saying? I just want us to see, right? So, 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 so here's mine. So here's what God told me. I wrote it down because I wanted to make sure I got it right. So first of all, for a scripture reference, God says, if you want to see how serious this is, read uh, Genesis 37, the story of Joseph. So, so the first thing God did when God showed Joseph his dream, he gave him a reset, meaning what? He took him completely away from his environment. He said, there's no way for you to be who I call you to be here with your father, here with your brother. One, your father loves you too much, so he can let you get away with murder. You a grown man out here... Uh, uh, taking notes on what your brother's doing. You should be working too. You of age. But he on that Ryan's Buffet boy. I'm just saying he on the Ryan's Buffet. Jacob is a man of God, but he lying. He letting his son get away with murder because he love him. Bro, why are you grown and you out there taking notes of what your brother's doing? You shouldn't have no pen and no pad. You should be out there with your brother's working. You of age. But Jacob love you because he love your mama more than anybody else. So now you don't got to work like everybody else. He not, it's not right. I'm going to tell y'all something. You do stuff that ain't right. I don't care who you are. God going to fix it. He out there with a coat. Not only is he not working, he got on the coat that says, I ain't got to work. Y'all got to work. I don't got to work. I'm telling on every last one of y'all for not. There's like, okay, the devil is a lie. I bet, I bet you you won't make it home with that pen and that pad. I bet you won't make it back to daddy. They tried to kill him, but remember what I told you, when God died for you, God's got you. Is that all right? So number one, Jacob loved him too much, and he wouldn't discipline him. Number two, he couldn't stay in that environment because his brothers hated him too much for him to grow. God said, we got to go. For some of you, write this down. I know you're going to hate to hear this because it's uncomfortable. Some of you need to leave the environment you're in. You need to reset from the environment you're in. You need a total reset. I'm telling y'all honest truth, I'm, and I mean this with all my heart. I would still be at Bethel Seventh-day Adventist Church today if I had my choice. I thought it was the worst thing that ever happened. I'm like, God, what are you doing? How I get fired from a church? <laughs> you know what you got to do get fired from a church? I'm like, God, you going to put that on my resume? I done got fired? <laughs> I didn't get fired from uh, Wendy's. I worked at Wendy's and they ain't fired me. I know I was trash at Wendy's. <laughs> And they held on to you, boy. I was doing the right thing here, and I got fired. He said, you're not getting fired, son. This is a reset. Where I'm taking you, this environment is not conducive to taking you there. And you're too stupid to leave. I saw all the signs, and I was fighting them. People would call me. Hey, they meeting against you. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm going to preach better. <laughs> I'm going to get more organized. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm not going to leave. I'm going to be better, and you're not going to want me to. God said, you get, how are you going to get better in an environment where they don't even want you? No, I'm talking to somebody in the room. You're trying to get better for somebody that don't even want you. 
It don't, mean I'm, it don't mean I'm not making mistakes, but I promise you I'm in an environment where people, when I make a mistake, are trying to encourage me to get better, not get rid of me. Didi, like, yeah, you got some growing to do, but I ain't about to send you out there and let no other woman get the benefits of all this work I worked on. I'm about to get the benefits. <laughs> she ain't about to get blessed. I did all this work. <laughs> So yeah, I'm going to tell you about yourself, but I'm not telling you about yourself to leave. I'm telling you about yourself to stay. Okay, so here's, here was my reset. God said, you got to get out of your feelings. Your belief system is how you feel, and you got to get in your principles. So in my marriage, I was the fun guy. Dee Dee has legions on her brain right now because I was always the fun guy. She absorbed the stress because she was the one that took stuff serious. And I never supported her in it. I just like, when we go into the movies. I was the feelings dude. I just wanna make sure in our marriage we have fun. I just wanna make sure we have a good time. My credit score was like 500, I didn't even know that affected us. So when people say, Didi, you never changed your last name. Well, in the beginning she couldn't, because if she would've took my last name, she would've took my 500 credit score. And that would've been detrimental to our marriage. So she had to keep her last name because she had a great credit score and because she had a good history in her bank account. I, I, I was in my feelings. Like, who cares about bills? We getting late. I'm talking about, you didn't give me the money to go pay it some kind of way. I didn't miss the bill, uh, the company to pay the bill, and I didn't went to the mall. And I didn't bought the Green Bay Packer hat to go with my Green Bay Packer shirt to go with the green sneakers that I had. And I'm on campus with no lights, but like, ah, can y'all see me? I'm looking good. <laughs> no, it was my belief system was, as long as you feel good, it don't really matter what's really going on. It don't matter that you're flunking out of school, as long as when you go back home to Detroit Center, you look like you're doing good. I was in my feelings. And it wasn't until I shifted, it was like, I need to get out of my feelings, and I need to get into facts. I need to get into principles. So now when I wake up, I don't ask Didi how you feel. I ask Didi, uh, what do we need to get done today? What's on the agenda? What's, what do we need to, well, we got seven things. Then I know after the seventh one, then I can introduce fun. <laughs> so I'm looking at, okay, we can finish this by one, and we can have fun from 115. Okay, got it. <laughs> I'm just being real. When I used to wake up before, I just was like, hey, let's have worship. Let's pray. Let's go have fun. And then I'm upset with why she in the hospital, why she going through what she's going through, because she's stressed. Because she the one that's got to make sure all the bills are taken care of. She got to figure out where all the paperwork is. They called me, Mr. Thomas, we got a big opportunity for you, bro. We just going to need this document. I'm like, hey, D. She at work. I'm like, D, hold up for it. Tell your job. Hold on for a minute. I need that paperwork. Where's them documents? She's like, go in the drawer, open up, two, five, six, you'll see a red. With the red, open that one in the back, it'll have your name on it and that document. I'm like, bet. I come home. She come home. Where's the paperwork? I'm like, I don't know. I took it out. I gave them the number. I don't know, I don't know what I did with it. <laughs> She's like, at least you could have put it back. I'm like, we good. I'm finished with it. I did what I needed to do. <laughs> put up. <laughs> I said, what? put up? Like, why are you tripping? <laughs> You, are you mad because I ain't put it up? I just got a gig. <laughs> I'm just being real. And I was wondering what was up. Why ain't my marriage super blissful? Why are we having these bumps in the road? Because we having these bumps in the road. Because we having feelings. All we doing is roller coaster. <laughs> we ain't never doing no put your belt on. Think he go to sign. If you got high blood pressure, don't get on. If you're not a certain height, you can't get on. I wasn't on none of that. Everybody just get on. And if you fall off and we get sued, that's okay. We had fun. <laughs> then I was in my feelings. So when Didi would correct me about things that needed to be corrected so that I could become number one in the world in my speaking, I took it personal. And so now our relationship is disrupted because you're telling me what's bad. You're risking, your, you're risking me treating you a certain way because you're telling me the truth so that I could do better. I'm too stupid to see you risking that to tell me when you could just be quiet and not say nothing and let me get on stage and bomb. But I'm in my feelings. Oh, you don't never cheer me on. You don't never say nothing pop. I don't come home. I don't never hear. Give me an E. Give me an R. Give me, uh, give me a C. 
What's this Eric? She's like, I'm not interested in cheering you on. I'm, I'm trying to make you number one in the world. I just signed a deal, not even to speak, but to be the only African-American male in a new company sitting on the board with a chance to make eight figures and I only got to show up once a year. That didn't happen because of my charisma. That happened because Diddy made me structured. They didn't go, charisma, we want the charismatic black dude. They was like, oh, we see the structure charismatic. All these years, I'm fighting. Do it right now. You think you, why are you telling me what to do? I do it right now. My mama ain't, you ain't my mama. I, I know you didn't let her finish her job, so I kind of am. I kind of am. I don't want to be, but you left home at 16. I kind of am your mama because you don't know where your birth certificate is. You don't know where your past. You don't know. I'm kind of your mama. But sometimes it's okay to be your mama when you call me and ask me for what stuff is. But when I tell you, now all of a sudden you got an attitude about it. I'm not number one in the world, y'all, because I'm charismatic. I'm number one in the world because I got out of my feelings and now I understand principle. So the reason why you're telling me to do it now, Dee Dee, is because 90% of the time, if I don't do it now, I don't do it. That's why it took me 12 years to get a four-year degree. Because it's not that I can't do it, but I, don't, I have all these great ideas. I got all this stuff that could change the world, but I seem not to ever get to it. Some of y'all in this room, you know how much money you got inside of you? You know how dope you are? You got a dope idea, you ain't never done nothing with it. You might even wrote it down. It never got executed. So it doesn't matter that it's dope. It doesn't matter. And then we get an attitude when somebody say, well, what happened to that paper you showed me a year ago? Oh, you just trying to, I'm not trying to do nothing. I'm trying to help you to execute. You wrote it down, you never did nothing with it. So I was in my feelings. And now I'm disrupting bliss. I only got one more. So, so business. No, I'm sorry. Let me go with this one. So because I didn't want to be in principle and I wanted to be in my feelings, I was never direct. I'm direct now. Y'all know what I realized? When you're not direct, you're not even talking. I'm just being real. You know why I never wanted to be direct? Because I didn't want to hurt your feelings. But now you hurt mine. <laughs> I told you no and you asked me three other times. So I got to be direct. No. No, I can't. Somebody said, you're going, you're taking the kids to Dubai. Can I go to Dubai? No. God did not tell me to take grown people. He told me to take kids. God did not tell me to take church kids to Dubai. He told me to take kids from the hood. When we went to Disney World, he told me to take who? The kids from the church. It's not my money. It's his money. No. And if you got an attitude, go tell God to take you to Dubai. That's not my responsibility. You come with me asking me for stuff because you don't want to talk to God about it. Go ask God. Don't come to me. This is the vision God gave me. If you got a vision, go tell God to do your vision. But don't come in my vision telling me how to do my vision. And so God said, you're going to have to learn how to be direct. You're beating around the bush. You're not really saying what you want. You're going in circles. You're not saying nothing because nobody knows what you're saying. When you direct, it might hurt, but it, direct is direct. It's, no, it's a bunch of clarity in direct. Watch this one, business, y'all. Man, I'd be so much further in business. I hired people to pay their bills. My, my, my. I hired people because I hated the fact that I didn't have independence and I wanted people to have their independence. I hired people because I wanted people to be able to get up when they wanted to get up, go to bed when they wanted to get up, but work when they wanted to work. I, I didn't hire people for business. I hired people for feelings. And then when I don't get excellence, I got an attitude. It's like, that's not what you hired for. You got exactly what you hired for. Watch this. When I heard Magic Johnson say, you got to pick, I'm number one, I got to pick number one, I ain't had no problems with that. I'm doing that right now. But... I had a problem with making other people step up to the plate and being excellent because of how I thought it might make them feel. And God says, son, if you have put yourself in a position to be number one, then you, you deserve to be surrounded by number one. Again, I hired to help people, pay their bills, give them freedom, independence, to experience the American dream. But guess what? I should have hired for a return on my investment. I should have hired to make money. That's what business is. If, if you're not making money, it's a nonprofit. 
So I want y'all to do me a favor. Last slide. I want y'all to do me a favor before we leave. I want you to question some of your beliefs and say, is this biblical or did I get this from the culture that I grew up in, the neighborhood I grew up in, my best friends, people that I'm close to? Can I find this belief in the Bible? I guarantee you, because y'all already know who going to, after church, who going to riots. You already know who going. Right after church, you know who going to riots. So how did you lie about your child's age? That's not biblical. You know how you lied about it? Because it's a part of your culture. And somebody told you, hey, Ryan's just open. They got free food for kids. Under six. If you under six, you got, you got, oh, uh, and don't, hey, you know how we are. We will even pr produce fake documents if we need to. Oh, I'm not, y'all know I'm telling the truth. We can get fake documents to say we a certain age. Now Ryan's had to shut down. And not only did they shut down, anybody ever been to one of these buffets before? But if you ever been there before, because we don't follow principles, we let our babies put about 18 days worth of food on a plate, and they don't even eat it. And we ain't saying nothing to them about it. You know that ain't right. But you ain't saying nothing to them. They got four, five plates full of food. You know they're not about to eat that. Now, if that was your money and your business, you'd have an attitude. But because it ain't your business... You're going with your culture and not the Bible. You can't find, lie about age, and uh, have a bunch of food on your plate that you're not going to eat. Come on, that's some new school stuff. Y'all know when we grew up, Grandma would, not only would you get in trouble for not eating all your food, you couldn't leave the table. <laughs> Bump trouble, you couldn't be, your grandma would be like, do me a favor now, you can get as much as you like, but I promise you, if you get two pieces of chicken, when I come back, you better eat two pieces of chicken. Or get one piece, and if you eat that piece and you're still hungry, you can go get another one. But if you put two pieces on there and you don't eat, not only are you getting your butt whipped, you're not going to see the light of day. You're going to be in this house. Am I talking to anybody? Now nah, it's like, I don't want to hurt his feelings. Let him put five pieces of chicken on there. He don't got to eat but half of one. Meanwhile, the business is going broke because we're wasting food. I'm just saying when we leave, if our biblical principles match our daily principles, we take off. The problem is we got one set of principles that we say we believe. We got another set of principles we actually acting out. Imagine what our lives would look like if we weren't going by the hustle mentality, only the holy mentality. Imagine if we weren't going by survivor mode, but scripture mode. All right, last one, Ephesians 4 and 20, uh, 22 and 24. I'm going to let you get out of here. You were taught, praise God. <laughs> Hallelujah, say it with me. You were taught, good, one more time. You were taught, and we're not talking about just the, the principles, the biblical principles that the church loves to, you got to be fully submersed and keep the Sabbath and don't eat this. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the ones you were taught and you live by daily. You were taught with regard to your former way of life. Put off the old self. Put away feelings, Eric, and live by principle, which is being corrupt by his deceitful desires. Lying and saying uh, he five when he nine. Which is being corrupted by its deceitful desires. You, you ain't never even raised my man. He on your taxes. He's a dependent. He ain't no dependent. You ain't never took care of him. How you get on your taxes? It's deceitful. It's not right. Man, I tell you, it's hard living with Didi, but principles are, they, they, they don't, I told y'all, we went home recently and Jada got a second job and it looked, like one, it looked like one day she came home and went to bed, and Didi pulled her to the side and said, hold up now, I seen you went to bed. Now, I don't know your little schedule, but I know you work for ETA and you're collecting a check. So either you're working for your dad or you're not working for him. If you're not working for him because you're working for the other company, then stop getting paid, but you're going to curse us if you're taking money and you're not doing the work. My wife could have just overlooked it. She working right now. She don't got time. Diddy was like, mm-mm, no. We living by principle. I don't care nothing about your feelings. You're not going to put a curse on our family taking money you ain't working for. 
You're not going to be deceitful. If the government look, we're not going to lie and say you work when you didn't work. So you got to figure it out. Are, do you have time? I know, all I know is the next day, I'm like, where's Jada? She was at Starbucks after work <laughs> with her computer getting it in. We got to stop saying we Christians, but we're not following this stuff. Today is a day of reset. All the stuff we know we're doing that ain't right, it's time to reset. It don't make us evil. It don't make us bad people. Today is not about just going, Jesus died for our sins. This resurrection weekend, it's time to celebrate. No, it's time to reset. All the errors and the glitches, as painful as they are to correct, and as inconvenient as they are, we got to live by principle. Finally, to be made new in, in, in the attitude of your mind. Is it, pastor, is it, not, is it not clear here, pastor? It's clear. And to put on the new self, created to be like God in true righteousness and holiness. Let's prepare ourselves, for those of you at home, let's pre prepare ourselves uh, for communion. Amen. Pastor and I, we don't, we don't do communion um, just to do it. Uh, we don't do it just because, quote unquote, it's church tradition. Uh, we do it for the sake of change. So grab, grab a pen and paper, um, grab your phone. I'm going to give you four scriptures, and I want you to write these scriptures down. And we want you to study these scriptures as we go forward into the next quarter. Because if you're, if you're coming to church and if, if, if you're doing what you say you're doing, you truly believe in the resurrection, then it should be changed. So I want you to prepare yourself for communion. But before we eat the bread and before we drink the blood, we need to get the word of God into ourselves. Amen? Philippians 3, 13 to 14 says, Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. I want you to write that down, Philippians 3, 13 to 14. One thing, write that phrase down, one thing. What's, what's the one thing that you're going to do after today that's going to change the trajectory of your marriage, of your children, of your legacy. What's the one thing? And here Paul says, I, the one thing I do is I forget what is behind. If you go into the store pass and you try to buy iPhone 9, they tell you we don't sell iPhone 9. We don't sell iPhone 10 or we don't sell iPhone 11. We don't know if we sell that. The problem is too many of us are still going back and we're not going forward. So what's the one thing you're going to do to get what God has for you? Paul said, I forget what is behind. And I press on towards the mark. I'm not perfect, but I forget. John 20, 6 to 7. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen cloths lying there. And the face cloth, which had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen cloths, but folded up in a place by itself. Now, I love this scripture, and I want you to write this scripture down. I want you to read it every day for seven days. And I remember me and First Lady Didi talking about this scripture, and, and it's been in some debate with scholars of, of why the, the, the cloth was folded. And some scholars say 
back in, back in, in Jewish custom, when, 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 when the master folded his cloth and he put it uh, next to his plate, they say it was customary that, 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 the, that the servant knew that he was coming back. This cloth was folded because he said, I'm not, I'm not done yet. And, and, and some scholars said, well, they're not 100% sure that's accurate or not. But what we do know is this. During that time, they put the tomb in. They, they, they put the boulder in front of the tomb because they, they didn't want people to think that Jesus' body was stolen. And I declare to you that the linen cloths that he was wrapped in and, 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 and the cloth that covered his head were separated. And so God was saying that, listen very carefully, he died and he resurrected. It is a separation. So if you're going to have something new, there has to be a separation. Whether the cloth was folded, to me he was done or not done, doesn't matter. What matters is that God, listen very carefully, made sure that when Jesus Christ got up, it was in an orderly fashion. So we got to let go of the mess, and we got to move forward to be blessed, because God is a God of order. So there's some mess that you got to leave behind today. There's some message you got to get rid of today. You got to press forward towards the mark of a higher calling. In order to do that, you have to be in order. Some of our homes are out of order. John 6, 53 to 56. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, unless you eat the flesh of the Son of Man and drink his blood, you have no life in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Can I say it this way? You're not, you, you're not truly living, you're just breathing to death. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood has eternal life, and I will raise them up at the last day. For my flesh is real food, and my blood is real drink. Whoever eats my flesh and drinks my blood remains in me and I in them. The word is to remain. And every time we go back, we don't remain. Every time we think back, we don't remain. Every time we don't press forward, we don't remain. I declare to you that yes, Jesus Christ died for our sins, Pastor, but the word says he died so that we can have life and have life more abundantly. I deserve the abundant life. My wife deserves the abundant life. My children deserve the abundant life. This church deserves the abundant life, but I cannot have the abundant life if I don't eat the blood, if I don't eat the bread, and if I don't drink the blood. John 6, 57 to 58, just as the living Father sent me, and I live because of the Father. So the one who feeds on me will live because of me. This is the bread that came down from heaven. Your ancestors ate manna and died. Hallelujah. I'm going to stay right there because that, that's your praise spot. Your ancestors ate manna and died, but whoever feeds on this bread will live forever. Forever. Before we draw our last scripture, a pastor gave the testimony about Disney. Pastor, I, I declare you that, that for some reason, American Airlines had some issues the other day coming back from Disney, and almost all the flights were delayed, Pastor. And, and I remember that there was a time where I, I, my wife used to call me, call me sensitive, and that would piss me off. And she would say, the fact that you're pissed off <laughs> shows that you... The fact that you pissed off right now, I, I don't even, she, she's like. And I remember that, that, when, when that, that pastor, my flight was delayed, and I realized I was going to miss my connecting flight, and I was like, praise God. I wasn't frustrated, I wasn't upset, I wasn't, I said, well, I guess we're going to be, and I don't know where we're going to be at, but we're with God. See, very carefully, I realize that I'm growing, I'm not who I used to be. And I declare to you that we didn't get home to 2.30 in the morning. But my son, my oldest son, Anthony Tyus III, you have to be new because somebody's watching you. If you don't break the curse, your son's going to go through it. And Trey called me, Pastor, and Trey said, Dad, I missed my flight. And I was surprised Keenan, he was pissed off. Where did you get that spirit from, son? Calm down. He's like, I can't believe it. this woman told me to get here early. Right, he, going, he, going, he going in. He going in, Marcel. I'm like, son. He's like, Dad, I'm not, I'm, I don't even want to talk right now. Like, did, he just, did he just hang up on me? I know you're 21, bro, but I know you're bigger than me, bro. <laughs> did you just hang? And I was, I, 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 I said, God, like, 
I, like, like, we almost missed our flight. And we, we missed our second flight, and, and I was cool. Why, why, why my son not? He said, because it took you too long to become new. It took you too long to go far. So when he, so when he grew up in your household, he saw that version. But now that he's out the household, you want him, he don't see that because he's not in the household anymore. It took you too long to move forward, so he's still back there where he... So I was like, God, I said, man, I said, Trey, like, like, yeah, like I, I know he got, like, bro, you got money. You got money. Get a hotel. He said, nah, dad, I'm, I, I got here at 11 o'clock. My flight is at 10 o'clock. I'm not, I'm not going to waste money on a hotel room for 10, nine hours. I said, son, just get a hotel. Nah, dad. I'm, and he hung up. I'm like, dig I'm like, I'm still paying his phone bill. So, you know what I'm saying? Like, Verizon, yeah. You know what? A second thought, we don't need that line anymore. My wife called him and she offered to pay for a hotel because he wasn't spending the money. He said, no, nah, I'm good. The following morning passed, I was like praying, like, God, bless my son. I sent him a text message. I said, son, you don't know this, but there was a time where we were younger when you were a little kid and I wasn't taking care of my finances the right way. And we were going to North Carolina and my check didn't hit until the, the following morning. We were low on gas and Slept at the gas station until my check hit the following morning. So I want you, I said, son, I want you to understand that, that, that the very thing that, that you're upset about somebody else is praying for that situation. You, you had the finances to get a hotel you chose not to. I said, I need you to make sure you, you control your spirit because right now you're upset. And he responded to me, he said, dad, I'm good. He said, because God taught me a valuable lesson last night that I would not have got had I not been in the, been in the, the, uh, the airport. And Angie, I just sit there and I said, praise God. While I was trying to get him out of the airport, God wanted him in the airport because God needed him to learn the Bible lesson so he can move forward. He was 4, 16, let us approach God's throne of grace with confidence so that we may receive mercy and find grace to help in our time of need. Let us approach with confidence. With confidence. We're born in sin. We're shaping iniquity. But as for TJ Tyus, I have confidence. Because my God didn't just die for my sins. He died so that I can have the abundant life. So when I partake, I'm partaking with confidence. Because behold, the old me is dead. The new me is here. I press towards the mark of a higher calling. I have not obtained it. But I will not stop chasing it. Father, we pray that you will bless these sacraments, Father. Father, we pray that you will make what is normal, Father, spiritual, Father, divine, Father. Father, that when we partake of it, Father, we're not doing it for the sake of tradition, Father, but for the sake of change. So, Father, we thank you for the opportunity, Father, because somebody somewhere does not have the opportunity to be in a place of believers or the opportunity to partake in communion, Father. So we don't do this in vain, Father, but we do it, Father, because we believe and we receive not only the forgiveness of sins, but the abundant life, the prosperous life. In Jesus' name, let every believer say amen, amen, and amen. Wherever you're sitting at right now in the sanctuary, those are online, if you're prepared for communion, I want you to think about what's the one thing. You heard the mighty word that God brought to his man, what's, what's, what's that one thing? two or three or four things you need to do before we partake that's going to make you new. I want you to think about that for a second. As I think it's get ready, I'll show you how we're going to come.
Father, we pray that you will bless these sacraments, Father. As we read the scripture, Father, we pray, Father, that we don't take this lightly, Father. We pray, Father, that we take this with the utmost seriousness, Father. And Father, that we pray that as we move forward, Father, that we begin the new life that you have for us, Father, and let the old pass away. Amen. First Corinthians 11, 23 to 24. For I received from the Lord what I also passed on to you. The Lord Jesus, on the night of his betrayal, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke bread. Hallelujah. He broke the bread and he gave thanks. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, verse 25, after supper he took the cup, saying, this cup is a new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. For whenever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Let the church say amen. Let the church say amen. Even in drinking the cup, the word of God says this is the new covenant. And so our prayer, our belief, and our stance is that we are new, we think differently, we act differently, and we get different. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Young adults, teenagers, our babies, please come to the front. We want to pray over you. If, you, if you're not sure if you're a young adult, you're a young adult. Amen. Amen. If you had to think about your birthday, you're a young adult. Amen. Hallelujah. Mic check. Mic check one. Um, if you guys can come off the instruments and come for prayer as well. Joseph. You guys can come closer to each other if y'all don't mind. Come closer. Just ask my adults that are believers if you could just stand with me at this time and raise your hand. Um, as a pastor who, you know, is responsible for a group of youth, I realize that the, the internet is a influence that we as adults will never understand the power of the internet and what social media is doing to our babies right now. Um, people are comparing themselves, comparing their relationships, comparing, they don't even get an opportunity just to do what they want and be who they want. It's just so much pressure, so much negativity, it's just overwhelming. You wake up with your phone, you go to bed with your phone. And so I just want to, I want to pray with them. I don't want to judge them. I don't, I don't want to put negativity toward them. I want them to see our support and know that when they're going through something, they don't just have to go to the arms of evil people or people who are available. They, they can come here. Amen. They can come here. Amen. They can come to us, especially when they are doing things that they just are embarrassed about uh, things they don't understand, things that they've lost control. This is home. Come home. Do not entertain strangers when you're going through your go through. Come home. Come, come. Although it may seem embarrassing, it's not. All of us adults have made our mistakes. And so come home. We understand in a way that you don't think that we understand. But we're here to protect you. Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, I ask for a reset for our young adults, Lord. Some may need to cut the internet off. They may need to just discontinue their entire um, TikTok or 
Instagram, or whatever their social media of choice is, Lord. They may need to just cut it off because it's just too distracting. It's too overwhelming. There are people that have access to them via the internet that they would not have had access to 30 years ago. And so cover them, Lord. The devil is using social media as a vehicle to have access into our baby's heart and to their minds and to their influence. And so, Lord, we pray, Lord, that they would use their Bible app a little bit more, that they would use their social media for more spiritual things, because you can never go wrong in the spirit, Lord. You can't go wrong in the flesh. So cover them. We understand their temptations. We were once their age. And so be with them, Lord. Give them the abundant life, not the abundant regret. And so we just ask right now that there are some, even in the midst of us, who are in relationships they want out of, they just don't know how to get out, get them out. There are some situations that they're in that they didn't ask to be in, that they're in. Get them out of those situations. Free them. And then they never go back again. And then bless us as adults not to just sit by and watch the internet create opportunities for them. And at the church, we provide nothing but lip service. Put us in a situation to continue to be able to provide healthy, progressive, clean opportunities, Lord, for them so that they can be young but be protected. Again, Father, we thank you for protecting them. We thank you for watching over them. We thank you, Lord, for blessing them. The same way you got me out of a whole bunch of stuff, get them out. If you did it for me, I know you could do it for them. So we thank you in advance. We love you. We praise you. We ask for forgiveness of sin. And we ask, Lord, any trouble that they're in that the devil is trying to use to destroy them, clean their record in Jesus' name. Amen.